Welcome to Flight Sim Planner. My name is Rob. I'm the developer. Um, started the Flight Sim Planner up, you get the startup screen which shows you some statistics and info uh, about the current database loaded. For instance, uh, the number of airports and uh, uh, all the kinds of other stuff. Um, you can start the Flight Sim Planner by hitting the Start Navigation button. The uh, uh, Flight Sim Planner uses uh, Google Maps as its maps and the overlay uh, of markers is uh, taken from the database. It will show some different uh, airports and also some navigational aids uh, laying around on, on, the, on, the, on the map. Um, when I zoom in uh, or uh, do things around like you used to with maps, you can actually push the icon of the airport. This is uh, Schiphol Amsterdam Airport. It gives you all the information on that specific airport. Uh, like the location, the elevation, all kinds of frequency information and their runways and their info. Um, when I click uh, this you will get into the uh, weather uh, screen. Uh, this uh, will uh, load up uh, the weather from the uh, uh, US uh, weather uh, site and it will show you all the airports within a radius of 100 miles from the airport I just clicked on the map. Um, taking a look for instance at uh, Rotterdam airport uh, this is the current weather for for now it has a 16 degrees of temperature and 000, zero wind direction so actually an absolutely northerly wind of one not so there's no, well not much wind. Um, also have the TEFs uh, available so again Rotterdam Airport uh, it will give you all the forecasts for the oncoming uh, two days I think it is so like from the 28th and the, and the 29th of uh, May hitting the back button you get back into the navigational uh, screen Hitting somewhere on the map where there isn't anything, the info window will uh, disappear. Um, you will see here, this is my home airport. Uh, there's a plane uh, uh, on the runway at this moment. This is set in the settings where you can set your default. Uh, when the flight sim planner starts, it will uh, center this on the screen with a certain zoom level, which means about, I think, a 300 by 300 kilometers or like uh, 100 by 100 nautical miles um, of square on your screen. It will show up on uh, a um, um, scale bar on top so you have an indication on how many miles or kilometers in this case uh, the, uh, the distances uh, will, uh, will be. On the left here there is an info window which shows you the current location and if the plane was moving you will see a ground speed and a heading. Um, underneath the direct to button you will see a, uh, the, the track information of the direct to course I have chosen. If I hit that button I will have a search uh, ability and this will give you all the, all the, import, all the airports within a radius of 100 miles. Choose the Teugen Airport and do select and then it will draw a direct line from my home base Lelystad to Teugen Airport which is uh, some uh, east southeasterly out of, uh, of Lelystad. It will show you the track information, the distance uh, 23 nautical miles and the heading of 124. Um, this uh, line that's drawn here is actually uh, uh, fixed to the plane's position. So if the plane starts moving and you're not following the uh, 124 uh, heading exactly, you will see that heading is changing depending on the uh, position of the airplane at that point. Uh, on top here you will see a whole bunch of buttons. The left button is the search button. If I want to search for a certain airport, I just want to know where Hogeveen Airport is for instance. I'll click that and it will show you show up on the map uh, relative to uh, latest that it's over there. So that's the way uh, searching works. Um, uh, 
the airports shown here are the airports within a radius of 100 miles but if I go into here and I so start searching for an airport somewhere in uh, Germany for instance it will show up um, all the airports uh, that has something of this um, search uh, area in there so I'll just go into that airport for instance and it will show up on the map over there and uh, relativity to Lelystad it's over well, again so that's basically what it what it does um, I'll zoom into my home location again and uh, these two buttons over here the one with the plus sign is uh, for adding a new flight plan and the one with the lighting sign is for activating already created flight plans I'll go in and activate a already known air uh, so I'll just choose Ladystad Texel for instance and then I can put in my wind direction and wind speed at the top and now it's changed to like 7 knots so I do activate and the flight plan is drawn uh, uh, on my map. Uh, in the past I used this flight plan already added a waypoint over there. I can add another waypoint around Enkhuizen for instance. What I'll do is just push and hold. Then I'll get a add uh, waypoint and uh, say this, this is Enkhuizen and I say save. You saw a search button over there as well and that search button can be used to search for airports or navates or uh, fixes uh, um, which you can insert into your flight plan as well. Um, if I go and take a look at the position of this waypoint I'm not happy with that so what I do I just push and hold the waypoint then I will get it underneath my finger you see it moving and I'll place it over here exactly so and it will change the track as well and you will see that underneath here the flight plan is is uh, changed as well your headings are changed what you see here is that you have your wind speeds uh, this these wind speeds uh, with the true track that's been calculated out of the course will calculate a wind correction angle which is put into the true heading uh, it will also calculate the ground speed for you because with wind in the back it will go faster than with wind up front and with an 180 wind with this course from south to north you will you always have a higher ground speed than your indicated airspeed it will calculate the distances of these uh, these specific legs and will also uh, add them up so that you know after every leg uh, what the total distance is you covered already covered then you will get the magnetic heading um, this is a button you can click in the Netherlands it's easy because the magnetic variation at, the, at this moment is around zero degrees so I'll just set uh, this but uh, on other locations I can presume that uh, the magnetic heading can be uh, a whole bunch of degrees easterly or westerly uh, next to that you will see the compass heading so uh, for uh, your deviation of your compass you can uh, just take a look at the different headings and uh, uh, supply a correction for them uh, this is only important when you're doing flights in a real plane and not in your flight simulator because that's probably not taking much care of deviation but you can just change it for every course you want to uh, next to that it will calculate the times for you, the, to the total time uh, of all the legs added, to, added up to each other, taking up to Tesla airports of uh, 28 minutes of flying time, it will probably be something more because of the entry and the exit of the, the, the circuits at both the departure and the arrival airport, but uh, well, 30 to 35 minutes of flying time will probably be uh, around uh, what you have to take for this. Um, next to that you have your uh, um, estimated time of arrival, the actual time of arrival and your uh, recalculated time of arrival. If you're taking off you just push the takeoff button and it will calculate the, uh, the uh, estimated times for you for, this, for the different waypoints. Well when you over that waypoint, say you are over Enkhuizen, you push the NA button and it will put in the real time of arrival so the actual time of arrival and it will actually recalculate any uh, 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 arrival times 
um, uh, which are different from the uh, estimated time of arrival at the beginning of your flight. Um, on front of here there are two arrows. Uh, of course the uh, Lelystad Airport and the Tessel Airport are your departure and arrival airport can be changed in position but you can change the position of the uh, intermediate waypoints uh, if you like to. Uh, you can only move these one up and that one down. If there is one in the middle that can be moved both up and down then both these buttons will be visible for that uh, specific waypoint. Okay, if you Take a look at the buttons over to the right. You will have a um, red lightning arrow and a connect disconnect button. The red lightning arrow means that you can uh, change the um, sorry for that. You can change the the the, the way the tracking with the map works. Uh, normally, when it's uh, turned uh, on and it's uh, it's red then the plane will be on the center of the map and the map is moving with the position of the plane uh, otherwise if it's turned off so it's uh, colored white then the plane will just uh, move around the map and the map will stay in its position this it can be handy if you want to look something up in the map and you just move it around and it doesn't uh, uh, fix back into the center position again when that's not turned on. So you can just zoom into a specific piece of your map and do things over there. Uh, the zoom in and zoom out will still work but the, if this turned on then the plane will always be in the center position and the map is moving with the plane. Uh, next to that there's a connect button, you already saw it. It's trying to connect to the flight simulator at this point. There isn't any flight simulator active uh, in my network, uh, so it uh, gave me an error. Otherwise it will connect and, and that button will sh uh, show up red as well. At that point the tracking is started. What it does is that, is that um, um, it takes the date and the time of the moment the connection is established and put that in a database as a new track and adds the points every 100 uh, nautical miles that's been traveled into the database. So that way a track of point is saved into the database. If you again hit the connect disconnect button and disconnect from your flight simulator or from your GPS in this case, and that is also possible, then uh, the whole of the track is saved in the database and can be, re and can be recalled on a later date. If you push the options menu you have a load previous track option there's only one in there at the moment I can select that the load button will be effect, effect, uh, activated and your track will show up on your map right here and taking a look at that I started out on runway 23 flying to the southwest and exiting the uh, the circuit doing a northwest northeast course up to that junction up there um, uh, turning to the east up to Dronton turning again to the southwest um, to a uh, reporting point which is underneath here in that junction you have to report to come back into uh, airport uh, latest at airport and uh, joining the circuit downwind doing a left hand and landing again. So from all the flights you do this will be uh, in in the database. Uh, if you again push the uh, options button you will have a settings uh, uh, ability as well. Here on the left side you will see uh, what the home airport is. Uh, again this is the airport that's uh, used to uh, center the map when uh, the program starts and on the runway that's been chosen here the plane is put uh, in position. Next to that you will see the server IP and the server port number. Server IP address is important for connection with your simulator. Uh, you have to look that up on your simulator computer and it's important that both your tablet and your uh, simulator PC are in the same network. Uh, the server port number is uh, not thing that you have to change often. 
uh, it probably can stay on 5000 uh, without any problems but if you have some special program on your PC using port 5000 well you can change it uh, within the configuration of our server program uh, but you have to change it here as well so that uh, another uh, TCP IP port is used for the connection underneath there there's a connection type you see it uh, it's on simulator right now you can put it on GPS and then it will use the internal GPS of your tablet if there is one in your tablet not all tablets have a GPS built into it but this one is a Samsung uh, Galaxy Note which has a built-in GPS underneath there you have the show instruments uh, option you can uh, leave that on or turn that off if you turn it off and uh, normally these six instruments are shown up here they are only active when you're using the flight simulator because then I only then I have the data to put, to put them to life otherwise there won't be much use using it uh, with your GPS I think the speed will work but that's probably the only one that's doing something the others uh, don't uh, show you any uh, interesting data um, the, the, the um, compass might work as well but I'm not totally sure about this so basically this is uh, my program um, please try it out download it from Google Play uh, if you run into problems uh, uh, or with installing with using it um, crashes whatever uh, please let me know drop me an email something else I can help you out and I can make my program better do an update and uh, you're happy as well thank you